Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Joy, Pink Girl Teaches, and this is the Project Real Love channel where I equip you with the necessary tools that you need to overcome narcissist abuse. Thank you for all the new people who have um, who have got on board on this channel, who have liked it, who have shared, who have subscribed. I appreciate your support very much. Continue to do that. And also jump in the comments and let's talk. And you can always email me like you do. And I will attach my email address at the bottom of this video or in the lower portion, right? So anyway, for those of you who do not know me, again, my name is Joy, Pink Girl Teaches. And I am a certified dating and relationship coach. You see, I provoke people to ditch the fairy tale and I then equip them to find that imperfect yet perfect love for themselves. I have a unique coaching program for women. It is called Love After Trauma. And this is geared for women who have endured some type of abuse. I am, I myself, I am a survivor of childhood sexual assault as well as narcissist abuse. And sometimes when we, not sometimes, but when we do, when we do encounter some type of trauma or abuse in our lives, it does taint our image on love, but you don't have to stay in that holding pattern. Your life can really evolve. And I am a living witness, listen, I am here to help you heal and recover, as well as provide you with the tools that you need so that you can win in the areas of life and love. And so I'm your girl, so you know, always email me if you need me. But as you can see from today's title and also from this, um, this channel, I'm here to talk to you about narcissist abuse. And here is a question that I got in the DM. So slide in the DM at Pink Girl Teaches or at Project Real Life Podcast. That's another thing that I do host the Project Real Life Podcast. And it is a dating and relationship podcast. So you can always hit me at, at Project Real Life podcast or you can listen to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform again subscribe like rate review and share but today i want to talk about well the question that was posed to me is how do i make the narcissist respect me you have got to stop giving the narcissist so much credit you know these questions how do i make the narcissist respect me it almost makes them seem like they are a normal person they're not. They may appear normal. They may function normally, but it's all a facade. It's all an illusion. If I were you, I would not hold my breath. I came out of a relationship with a narcissist and I had to get my whole life together. Like I had, I had to snatch it right back. Here's what you need to know. The narcissist respects nobody, not even themselves. And if somebody doesn't respect themselves, how do you expect them to respect you? Don't look for respect from the narcissist. They are incapable of giving that to you. What narcissists actually do is they admire people. But listen, it always goes back to their why. You have to know that narcissists, whatever they do, there's a reason why. Just like um, why they found you, why they chose to, um, you know, get into a relationship with you, why they chose to pursue you. They had a reason. And, you know, that was simply to derive narcissistic supply. Don't ever lie to yourself and say that's because, you know, they wanted a relationship with you or they loved you. No, they love nobody, including you. It was not love. A narcissist respect I mean, they don't respect, but they admire people and they admire them for reasons like their wealth, they're very rich, they're very beautiful, they're sexy. They admire their influence or their affluence, um, their talent, or maybe they're intelligent. It's things like that, that they that they like and they want to emulate that. You know, they are the biggest type of clout chasers that there is, period. And so um, excuse me, that's why, you know, they would want to attach themselves to that. Now, narcissists will att attach themselves to whatever they feel can elevate them to whatever they feel that they can then go back and take to prior partners or family members and say, you know, I hang with them. I am them, you know, so it's really got nothing to do with you. It's got nothing to do with the people that they are with or who they associate with. It is all about them. You have to lose that thought. 
don't even entertain it. Like you cannot change the narcissist. And um, <laughs> if you are now asking yourself, how can I, I mean, how can I get their respect? You're already being overlooked by the narcissist and that's the greatest place to be allow them to overlook you and that's that should be your goal when the narcissist has overlooked you you're either in the devaluation stage or you have advanced to the discard stage and although it's painful but guys that's the best place to be and stay there and how you stay there is delete delete all their contact information from their phone before you delete it go ahead and block them delete the text thread delete their number even in some cases, you really will have to disassociate yourself from mutual friends because you don't want to leave a window open because trust me, the narcissist is going to try and come back into your life. That is a given. And, and a lot of people will wonder, but it's been like a whole year and um, I, they haven't reached out to me. Okay, then that's great. Don't think that their life their lives are going on wonderfully without you. It's just a facade. Like if they're ignoring you, that's wonderful. Like for me, it's been about a year since I spoke to, yeah, it's actually been really real, just slightly over a year. I last spoke to him the day before last Valentine. So that would be um, February 13th of 2019. And that was it. That was the last conversation. And obviously it was a hover attempt. Obviously it was to set me up for disappointment and all that future faking and everything. But at this point, I knew what was up. And so, you know, I just set up the right parameters, the right boundaries, and I continued to live my life. And I think it was maybe about a month or so ago when a third party let me know like, hey, so-and-so is asking about you. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I knew this would come eventually, but I didn't really think about it twice because guess what, guys? I focused on my life and I began to do me and I began to heal and I, you know, and even this channel, it's therapeutic for me. So don't, <coughs> excuse me, don't allow them to manipulate you even in their absence. Don't believe, um, you know, the lies that they tell you because really the narcissist has no good intentions for you. They have no purpose, no good purpose for you. And you don't want somebody like that in your life. You can, ladies, you could have diamond sauce in your coochie. Gentlemen, you could have, I don't know, the most amount of money. You could be a Bill Gates for all I know, whatever she still won't respect you. He still will not respect you. He'll admire you. They will admire you simply because of what you possess, but they will never respect you. Respect, you know, nah. Don't waste your time asking that question. Don't, you know, don't give them more attention in your mind than they actually deserve because what happens when you begin to consume yourself with these type of questions and this type of focus essentially what you're doing is handing them your power you are literally giving over your power to the narcissist so that they can continue to run through your mind and alter your thinking and nobody can do that without your permission and you have to learn how to say no and that's where your boundaries come i've said it before several times times, I'm going to say it again. Your boundaries are not to offend the narcissist. Your boundaries are not to be like in your face. I'm going on with my life without you. Your boundaries are in position and they should be in position to protect as well as to preserve who you currently are and the person that you are becoming, period. No other reason. And that is it. So stop trying to get their attention or stop trying to set up scenarios that would make you feel like if this happened, then they would respect me. Or if I, if I overextended myself like this and helped them because their mom is sick. And so I'm going to go take care of his mom or whatever. Don't do that. And again, check yourself. What is your motive? Why are you overextending yourself? Why are you, why do you have this consuming desire to, um, have respect from the narcissist and ask yourself that that's where we need to focus the focus should be on you the focus should be on your recovery 
and begin to work on that. You know, one thing that I like to say, or that I, that helped me, and I like to share this a lot, is that I had to write some unsent letters where I wrote to myself and, you know, and the purpose of the unsent letter is to help you set things in perspective so that you can see what's going on on the inside of you. Because sometimes, you know, it's sometimes once you get into that writing zone, you're just able to tap into your subconscious, which is a great place. However, people tend not to like the unsent letters for this very reason, because now you see in black and white what is going on with you. Now you have to take responsibility for making the change. And many times we do know what to do, but we just don't want to do it because it's difficult. But again, ask yourself, do I really want this? Am I worth this change? Am I worth reclaiming my life? And then if your answer is yes, then by all means, continue to pursue that. But remember, nobody has that power over you. Nobody has power over your mind. No one dictates who you are. No one controls your day or your thoughts except yourself. So when you find that you're heading down that path and that's where you're focusing, then you need to pull back a bit and find out what's going on with you. You know, it all starts with us. Um, there are very specific reasons why we were targeted by the narcissist. And they see, um, they see a broken link in us. Some people will tell you that's because we're empaths. I'm going to tell you for some of us, it's because we're codependents. At the beginning of this video, I shared with you that I was a survivor of childhood sexual assault. And that's where the codependency formed in me. It was my survival tool. Just like narcissism, is their survival tool. It's just a survival tool and it's not a healthy one and it's not the right thing to do. Do you fully recover from it? No, but you learn how to live with it. You learn how to cope with it, but you have to be aware of it so that you can make the choices that honor the person that you are as well as where you are going. So I'm proof. It's, it's hard but it's not impossible and it's well worth it. So continue to invest in yourself, continue to watch these videos on this channel, as well as my podcast, by the way, Project Real Love. There are so many different topics. <laughs> Or watch other channels like, listen, one of my favorite channels here on YouTube is Narc Survivor. He is awesome. His information is incredible, but there are literally thousands of videos on narcissism out there. So watch them, read, read up on it. Like I immensed myself in information because I needed to know like, hey, hold up. What just happened to me? Because none of this makes sense. And once I began to go through the learning process and I began to become aware, then I was able to heal because the, the key for me was understanding that everything was a lie and <laughs> from day one. And it was hard. It was such a tough pill to swallow, but I swallowed it. I gagged a little bit, but I swallowed it. Ooh. And here we are. I'm treading in deep waters. But anyway, um, that was the first step. And I did it and I continue to do it. And I encourage you to do it. And then once, you know, once I got, once I had a better mind frame, I may not have been fully, you know, healed. I got on here and I began to talk on it. I began to talk about it on my social media at Pink Girl Teaches or at Project Real Love. And I just began to share my experience and I began to talk and it was therapeutic. And I met more people within the community who are thrivers and survivors. And I would also have people who were right at the beginning of their healing process and were like, what do I do? And you know, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm here. So listen, don't waste your time trying to get the narcissist to respect you. Ask yourself, do I respect me? That's who needs to respect you, yourself. Because once you respect yourself, you become self-aware. You know your value. You walk in another level of self-love. You walk in self-discipline and you will respect those boundaries. So take the time and respect yourself. And like always, love yourself and love each other. If you have not already subscribed, go ahead, hit subscribe, hit the notification button and share the video. Take care.